In this video, we'll be taking a look at the theory behind dependency injection. Then I'll show you how to install a Zenject, a lightweight DI framework made just for Unity. But before we get into all that, let's talk about Unity's scripting framework. Unity's scripting framework is based on a loose implementation of the Entity Component System pattern. Entity Component System, or ECS, is an architectural pattern used heavily in game development. Like the name suggests, its design involves three key players, entities, components, and systems. An entity is a general purpose object that typically consists of nothing more than a unique ID. A component contains state data about one aspect of the entity that it's attached to. And a system performs actions on entities that possess components for which it's been assigned. Entity component systems promote the composition over inheritance principle, which states that objects should achieve polymorphic behavior and code reuse via composition rather than inheritance. In other words, instead of objects gaining behavior vertically through subclassing, objects expand horizontally through the addition of components. Unity's scripting framework is a close implementation of the entity component system pattern, except it's missing the notion of systems. Instead, components, or monobehaviors, contain both state data and behavioral logic for the entities, or game objects, that they're attached to. This presents a big problem because, by definition, components aren't supposed to know about other entities or their components. And let's face it, entities should be interacting with one another, or else what kind of game do you even have? Eventually, you're going to have to start breaking the rules, and your mono behaviors are going to need to start communicating with other game objects. Unfortunately, Unity doesn't make this easy. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a class called Bullet Manager that manages all of the bullet objects in the scene. When a bullet is destroyed, it's responsible for informing the bullet manager. We can say that the bullet class has a dependency on the bullet manager. But how do bullet objects fill that dependency? How do they locate the bullet manager? One option is to make a call to gameobject.find. All we need to do is pass in the name of the game object that the bullet manager script is attached to. A simple enough solution, but what if another developer on the project decides to rename the game object without fully testing the code afterwards? They could run the project, test a mechanic that doesn't involve shooting, and remain completely oblivious to the fact that they just introduced a bug to the project. It's just too error prone, so gameobject.find is out. What about object.findObjectOfType? This is basically an implementation of the service locator pattern except it doesn't support the use of interfaces. With this method, if one of your teammates decides to rename the bullet manager class, at least they'll get a compile time error. That's nice because it tightens up the feedback loop and helps put a stop to regression. But now, any class that depends on a bullet manager is tightly coupled to this particular implementation. This makes code maintenance difficult and testing next to impossible. So I'm calling it object.findObjectOfType is out too. But there has to be a better way to fill our dependencies without using Unity's built-in static functions and without having to resort to singletons. Don't worry, we'll talk about singletons, they just deserve their own video. But you probably already know where this is headed. Let's talk about dependency injection. Looking at our previous example, we can introduce a method to the bullet class that contains an argument for each of its dependencies. In this case, just the bullet manager. You can think of this method as a pseudo-constructor, since model behaviors don't support them. The object that creates bullets, for example, the weapon class, could then inject the bullet manager into each bullet that it instantiates. Unfortunately, all this would do is push the problem one level higher, making weapon responsible for both creating bullets and figuring out how to access the bullet manager. But if we repeat this process and push this responsibility further and further up the object graph, will eventually arrive at the entry point of the application. In DI terms, this entry point is known as the composition root, and it's the single place where the composition of your application's entire object graph takes place. Composition can be done manually or through the use of an IOC container. An IOC container is an object that creates and contains the dependencies that must be injected inside the application's objects. In Zenject, the composition root is made up of one or more installers, which are custom classes that implement Zenject's installer or mono installer interfaces. By overriding the install bindings method within an installer class, you gain access to Zenject's implementation of an IOC container. You can then use this container to create binding statements that tell Zenject exactly how to resolve each dependency. It's using these bindings that the entire object graph of your application is able to be filled. 
but we'll cover that in the next video. First, we'll need to install Zenject. Zenject is available on the Asset Store, so obtaining the framework is as simple as downloading it from assetstore.unity3d.com or from right within your editor. Just click Window, then Asset Store, and search for Zenject. Once you accept the agreement, you'll be able to access the source code as well as documentation and a few optional extras, which includes two sample projects. Alternatively, you can check out Zenject's GitHub repository for the absolute latest changes and builds, and easy access to the documentation. Well guys, thanks for watching. This video is part of a series of videos that I'm doing on Zenject. The next video will cover the different types of injections that are possible with Zenject. Then we'll cover all the bindings that are possible within installers. To join the conversation about Zenject or any other programming topics related to Unity or game development, feel free to join the Infallible Code public Discord server. Link in the description.